Hey guys, how you're doing? Welcome back to another video. So I have been doing some theorizing actual number crunching and have come to the conclusion that Rosera is going to set the new bar on four stars. She does everything to applying damage while off the field and giving everyone a crit rate boost. How good is this crit rate boost you may ask? So good. Okay, let's first go over a quick analysis of Rosaria's kit, then I'll go into the actual number crunching. First things first, from looking at Rosaria's kit, she looks like she is best suited as a sub DPS and not main DPS. Why you may ask? As it stands, physical damage is really weak in the game and the game is all about elemental reactions. Physical damage doesn't react with any element so you'll never truly get more out of it. If a skill or burst converted an attack to cryo, you could build it as cryo main DPS no problem. The main reason with building Rosaria as physical main DPS is that you'll run a physical goblet on Rosaria. What does that mean? This in turn weakens her skill and burst which does cryo damage, basically lowering her DPS overall. Someone like Razor isn't affected by this too much because when he's in his burst he gets an attack speed boost. I am just putting this out there, her attack ratios do be looking juicy though, especially her charge attack ratio. Let's talk about her ascension 4. If she is at 100% crit rate, she will give everyone a 15% crit rate boost which is huge. Her ascension 2, when she hits an enemy from behind using her skill, it will grant her 12% crit rate. Meaning she only needs 88% crit rate to reach 100%. How hard is it to get that 100% crit rate? Well, you 100% need to give her the deathmatch. The low base attack means the main stat, which is crit rate, is going to be a lot higher than normal. With the base 5% crit rate every character gets, and the 36.8% crit rate from the deathmatch, the 31.1% crit rate from the circlet, and the 12% from her ascension 2, you only need to get 15.1% crit rate from artifact substats to get the max 100% crit rate on Rosaria. Now, you might be wondering, how useful is this 15% crit rate boost for the team? Well, the tricky thing about this is that the actual damage boost from this is independent for each character. Rosaria nets us a 45% crit rate boost, but how good is it really? If you look at this table, you can see the individual damage boost relative to the crit damage a character has. If you want to find out the actual damage boost Rosera gives to the team, look at this chart. If we assume your main DPS has 200% crit damage and your other sub DPS has 100% crit damage, on average we have 133% crit damage. Meaning having Rosera on the team gives us an overall damage boost of around 60% with just her ascension 4 passive alone. I haven't even gotten into how much her burst and skill does guys. This is a lot of damage. Note that this is a 60% damage boost and not the difference. You might be asking what is the difference? I will use bigger numbers so you know what I mean. If I have 1940% crit damage and I increase it to 2000, I would have a crit damage boost of 60%. However, the difference is only 3%. Effectively, my damage is increased by 3% and not 60%. This is important to note when I go over the maths. Okay, that's enough about me rambling on about numbers for now. I do have to say something very important. The way a skill or burst activation works is that it looks at the current stats that your character possesses and that will be what is used for the duration of the burst or skill. Why is me stating this important? Well, let's say you have Ganyu, Jinkyu, Lisa or whoever burst or skill last when they are off the field. If I have Ganyu use her burst within Bennett's burst, it will take that attack value of let's say 3500 and use that damage for her burst throughout the whole entire duration. Even if I walk out of it or have my attack lowered, her burst damage will not change. So what does this mean? If Rosaria's crit rate boost is only going to last for 2 seconds but I use Ganyu's burst before Rosaria's crit rate boost expires, Ganyu's burst would do damage as if it had 15% more crit rate for the whole 15 second duration of Ganyu's burst. Listen guys, I don't normally hype up a character but Rosaria is a big deal. Now I have talked about her crit rate, 
Let me talk about Rosaria overall before I bring out the big math numbers for the comparison with Jinkyu and how she stacks up against the best sub DPS 4 star in the game right now. Her skill Ravaging Confession has a big ratio and a low cooldown of 6 seconds. I am not too sure why they put the lower ratio for the first hit but this in turn just lowers her damage when she procs melt which is a bit sad. However it still hits hard. Her burst her burst is also amazing. The activation damage ratios are high, but yet again it is split, meaning when she does trigger melt, it will do less damage than if both values were combined. From the trailer, her ice slant seems to apply the dot every 2 seconds, and the radius is kinda, kinda hurts. It's a really small radius, so if your character knocks enemies out of it, you will be missing out DPS on the burst. Okay. For ascensions, I already talked about this guys, but her A2 and A4 are amazing. She can increase her crit rate almost indefinitely, lasts for 5 seconds, her skill cooldown is 6 seconds, almost indefinitely. And she gives everyone a crit rate boost for 10 seconds, which is more than enough time to have everyone use their burst to fully take advantage of this crit rate increase. Okay, for constellations. I'll be a bit honest here, her constellations suck. Most of her constellations help her improve on her physical damage output, but as we know, physical damage isn't the best right now, and you are much better off doing elemental reactions. Enemies like Rune Guards have an innate high physical resistance of 40%, whereas smaller enemies have it by 10%. It's just a hard life out there for physical users. Maybe they'll release someone in the future who uses physical damage perfectly, but as of now, there are only two viable DPS characters in the game. That's Kaching and Razor. Okay, for her constellation one, it's pretty much a selfish constellation that increases her physical damage output. Not worth guessing. Her constellation two though is amazing. With it lasting four more seconds, it means the dot will apply two more times, increasing her damage by 50% if all the dot lands. Her constellation 3 is solid, increasing her skill damage by 3 levels. Nothing bad about it. Her constellation 4 is nice. It'll keep your burst up more consistently. Is it a big deal? Yes and no. If you already have a lot of energy recharge for Rosaria, it's not a big deal. But it does mean you can stack less elemental recharge on her, meaning you can substitute that energy recharge for attack, crit rate, or crit damage. This constellation gives a bit more reason on why her skill is split into two parts. However, it still is an L to take that lower ratio for the first hit. Two hits means there are two chances to land your crit hit to give her five energy back. Her constellation five is solid like constellation three, no downside. Her constellation six is useless. You don't build her physical damage, so it's pretty much useless. However, however, it is amazing on Physical Razor and Kaching team comp. You get to reduce the enemy defense by 60%. Sorry, enemy resistance by 60%. 40 from Superconduct and 20 from Rosaria's Constellation 6. All in all, if you're using her as sub DPS, getting her Constellation 2 is a must. But not too big of a deal because the most important part is her Ascension 4, which gives crit rate to everyone. If you're running her in a physical comp, getting her C6 is a big game changer as you will be doing a lot more damage. So, how important is her constellations and does it really matter? No, her constellations isn't important. The main thing from her kit to take away, the thing that makes her strong is that she provides a crit boost to everyone on the team. Okay, now on to the big math numbers. I've done two variations of this table. I will go in depth about the first variation first. This includes Rosaria's A4, but not Jinkyu's A4. The reason being is that Rosaria's crit boost that she gives to the team will be dependent on your setup. So because I'm not fully including every single data possible from Rosaria's Ascension 4, I will not include Jinkyu's Ascension 4. But I am going to do the comparison only with my Zhao. If I wasn't using my Zhao, the value of her crit boost will be a lot higher. I did make another table that does include Jinkyu's Ascension 4 so don't worry about it. I will show it after this table. To make it a fair trial for Jinkyu, I will be not using Zhao's plunge attacks. If I did, I wouldn't be getting Jinkyu's true burst damage and it wouldn't be generic for a lot of you guys out there who actually don't have Zhao. 
Zhao's damage would be so much higher if I did this. Why? Because plunge attacks hit multiple enemies, meaning you're going to crit more on multiple enemies and that will just bring these values so much higher by double, triple, quadruple. Depending on how many enemies I hit, the difference here will increase exponentially. So all of this information here is going to be assuming we hit one character. So, I will be using Zhao's normal attack variation with the dash animation cancel. Values are taken from a level 10 normal attack and burst Zhao. I will be doing percentage values only as what your attack is dependent on your builds etc. This makes this more reliable and generic. We will assume that enemies have 0% resistance so that the ratios remain true to their talents. These calculations are very rough as they don't include several things like character switching cooldown and more. But majority of what's important is included. We are going to assume that all damage is single target. If the damage is not to be assumed as single target, Rosario will do a lot more damage because her burst will hit multiple enemies, meaning if it hits three enemies, it this basically does triple damage. That goes the same for Zhao and any other character like Zhang Ling and Ganyu. Because Jinkyu is only single target, we'll be only assessing single target. But guys, if it's multiple enemies, Rosario wipes the floor with Jinkyu any day of the week. Trust me. Okay, time to make some sense into this table for you guys. We have three different keys to look at. We have the Rosaria and Jinku key. I'll be taking the values from their level 8 talents. The way Jinku's burst works is that his swords have a cooldown of 1 second. So every second, swords will fly out if you attack every 1 second. The swords alternate from 2 swords flying out, then 3. Now, onto the Zhao portion. I did it based on attacks when he's in his burst. If you're curious on how much Rosaria affects his plunge attacks, you can see the difference here. She affects his plunge attacks by 3800%. The difference is 7%. Within 10 seconds, the damage increase you'll get is 7%. Okay. What is effective crit damage? To get this value, all you have to do is multiply your crit rate by your crit damage. With my current Zhao stats, he has 84.8% crit rate and 196% crit damage. And 196% crit damage. Multiply those values together and we get 166% effective crit damage. We then add 100% to that value and that is how much our damage is multiplied by when we crit effectively. I say effectively because there will be times where we don't crit and this is our average damage basically. And when we gain 15% from Rosaria, our effective damage is near close to our crit damage. I have broken Zhao's damage into two parts. How much damage he will do in 15 seconds? And how much damage he will do in 10 seconds? In 10 seconds, he'll get the full effect of Rosaria's crit rate boost. He will do this much damage effectively with Rosaria. You can see it's about a 1700% difference. And the actual damage increase is 11%. Now, this is all within 10 seconds. Zhao's burst lasts for 15 seconds. Let's see how that actually stacks up. The values I got for 15 seconds was very simple. Two thirds of the time during Zhao's burst, we'll be using Rosero's effective damage multiplier. And then one third of the time, we'll use Zhao's effective damage multiplier. And that is how we got the value for 15 seconds. So we can see within the whole entirety of 15 seconds during Zhao's burst, Rosero only actually increases Zhao's damage by 7%. I will only be using the difference value because that is how much Rosaria's crit boost affects Zhao. So I'll be using 1700%. When I mention Rosaria's damage, this will include Zhao's damage difference. Now that I've explained how I got the values, let's look at the comparison. We will first look at their constellation 0. In the first 4 seconds, Rosaria will deal more damage. In the first 4 seconds, Rosaria will deal more damage overall than Jinku. This is because Rosaria's got that burst activation damage, whereas Jinku does not. As more seconds go by, Jinku's swords does outdamage Rosaria's damage, but not her crit rate effective damage for Zhao. Jinku's swords does outdamage Rosaria's burst damage, but not her crit rate effective damage for Zhao. After 8 seconds, we do see a sharp decrease in Rosaria's overall damage. Her dot lasts, her dot only lasts for 8 seconds, and after 10 seconds, she no longer provides a crit rate boost for Zhao meaning Jinku's damage does start to decrease the difference. We'll see that Jinku's damage does stop after 15 seconds until 20 seconds when his burst is back up. 
During the 15 to 20 seconds, I'm going to assume there is a burst and skill rotation during this whole entire 5 seconds. That's why we do not see a Zhao increase in damage until after that. After 20 seconds, there will only be around 5 seconds left for the crit boost for Zhao's attack. This is why you will see a sharp decrease from 24 seconds to 28 seconds, because his crit rate boost will stop at the 25 second mark. I didn't include 25 seconds into the table because there's nothing relevant happening there. If they're both at C0, Rosera still does provide more damage than Jinkyu. Let's compare the constellation two. Everything is pretty much the same, except that Rosera's burst will tick two more times, and Jinkyu's swords will fly out three more times and deal more damage. In the first 12 seconds, Rosera easily does more damage than Jinkyu, but after that, Jinkyu's damage does start to creep back up, but Rosera is more prevalent. Don't forget guys, this is single target damage only. If this was two enemies or more, Rosera would be doing a lot more damage than Jinkyu by a landslide because her burst hits multiple people and the crit boost from Zhao would be increased as well. And Zhao's damage will be increased because you're hitting more enemies so the difference here will be multiplied by how many enemies you're hitting. So the values you see here and here, if I was seeing two enemies, you would double both of these values and it would basically just wipe the floor with Jinkyu. However, her burst radius is very small, so it will be hard to land those dots. Okay, before I draw the conclusion, let's take a look at what the values would be if we were to include Jinkyu's Ascension 4. So to make it fair for Rosaria, I had to pretend they're both using their Cryo and Hydro Goblets respectively. So for Rosaria, we do... So for Rosaria, I did the value multiplied by 1.466, which is the Cryo Goblet. Okay, so how I got 1.666 with Jinkyu is you get 20% Hydro Boost from his Ascension 4 passive. And then from the Hydro Goblet, it gives you 46.6% Hydro Damage Boost. Add them together, we get 1.666. Okay. For Constellation 0, Rosaria out damages Jinkyu's damage for the first 8 seconds. Then Jinkyu takes back the lead in the next 8 seconds. Then Rosaria again. If this was to go on infinitely, Jinkyu would do more damage than Rosaria. For Constellation 2, the trend stays the same with Jinkyu out damaging Rosaria. However, like I said previously, this is a single target comparison. If multiple, Rosaria would easily out damage Jinkyu. And also, I'm not taking into account the damage boost from Rosario's crit rate increase to the other two pop members of the party. So, what can we draw from this? So, what can we draw from this? Is that Zhao is king. Whoa, la, la, la. Just kidding. Rosario is better when it comes to multiple enemies. But Jinkyu is still best when it comes to single target. Now, one thing I must mention is that if you have a C6 Jinkyu, he will deal substantially more damage. Why is that? His Constellation 6 gives him free energy for each sword that hits, meaning you don't have to build energy recharge on him to have a 100% uptime on his burst. This frees up his weapon from a energy recharge weapon to a more damage focused weapon. Like, you could go crit black sword, and then you could run the crit damage circlet. This would just elevate Jinkyu's damage. I'm not also mentioning about the stagger resistance Jinkyu swords give you. If you're running a character that does not have any stagger resistance, Trust me, Jinkyu's stagger resistance makes a big difference. Plus, his damage reduction on his swords makes you a lot tankier than you should be. And it gives you a lot more survivability. So, if you have Constellation 6 Jinkyu, run him instead of Rosaria. If not, it's better to run Rosaria. Or you can have the ultimate sub DPS team and run them both. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. This is a bit different to what I normally do. This is a bit different to what I normally do. So if you want to see more of this in the future, where I review newly to be released characters, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe as it does help me out a lot. Peace out guys.